Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at theories of development focusing on world systems theory. Another neo-Marxist approach to understanding global development is world systems theory. But what is world systems theory? World systems theory was developed by sociologist Emmanuel Wallerstein in response to criticisms of André Gunder Frank's dependency theory. Whilst dependency theory saw two distinct groups, the metropolis and the satellite, and examined the relationship between these two, world systems theory argues that the modern economic system is based upon interdependence between three categories of nations, the core, the periphery and the semi-periphery. Wallerstein's theory can be seen to explore the modern world system in a similar way to the class hierarchy in society, with the core nations as the most powerful exploiting both the periphery and semi-periphery. However, it differs from dependency theory by suggesting that the semi-periphery also exploit the peripheral nations. Wallstein's three-tier system comprised core nations, the Western powerhouses, the UK, USA, Canada and France, and some Asian nations such as Japan and South Korea. It also comprised semi-peripheral nations, what would be seen as newly industrialised countries such as Brazil and India. The final tier was comprised of peripheral nations, those with the least economic growth, nations in sub-Saharan Africa. The dominance of the industrial capitalist nations in the core led to them being able to exploit the other two groups. But unlike dependency theory, Wallerstein argued that semi-peripheral nations, whilst being exploited by the core, were also able to exploit the peripheral nations. These semi-peripheral nations had adopted some of the values of core nations and had begun to expand with the aim of becoming core nations. But how does this work? As we can see from the diagram on the screen, there are relationships between these three categories. If we start with the core nations, well, these profit from being able to sell their high value consumer goods to both the peripheral and semi-peripheral nations. In the modern world system, this includes banking, engineering, fuel, technology and other services. For example, many Western TNCs will run privatised health and education systems in both the peripheral and semi-peripheral nations. These markets help the wealth of the core nations to grow, as does the ability to attain cheap labour and natural resources from both the peripheral and semi-peripheral nations, so it's win-win for the core nations. However, unlike dependency theory, which suggests that the same thing occurs, Wallerstein suggested that the semi-peripheral nations were also able to exploit the peripheral nations, perhaps to a lesser extent, but they were able to sell consumer goods to the peripheral nations and exploit the cheap labour and natural resources. The main difference between Wallerstein's theory and that of Frank is that the semi-peripheral nations are both exploited and exploitative in their relationship with other nations, a global middle class some might say with aspirations of becoming core nations, so copying the means of achieving this through exploiting the peripheral nations. This answered a criticism of dependency theory, defining the extent to which nations are dependent upon one another. With dependency theory this was a simple binary relationship, the rich and the poor. With world systems theory this was expanded. A further benefit of world systems theory was that it explained the historical significance of colonialism, suggesting that nations with colonial pasts often had interdependent relationships with their former masters, retaining trade links that stretched back hundreds of years. For example, Caribbean islands were often reliant upon the UK to purchase many of their exports, such as coffee, bananas and other cash crops. A further benefit is that Wallerstein's world systems theory explains how nations are able to move up and down the economic hierarchy. Nations such as India and Brazil have both evolved to become part of the semi-periphery as a result of outsourcing of production from core nations to the semi-periphery, and this helps them to modernise. However, world systems theory is not without its critics. Firstly, it offers few alternatives to adopting capitalist methods of production and consumption, and this is a criticism also levelled at dependency theory. 
Furthermore, it fails to acknowledge the levels of control that core nations put into place to maintain their advantage. The use of aid, unequal trade relationships and enforcing debt repayments all hinder the progress of peripheral nations. Like dependency theory, it assumes an economic motive behind the entire process of development, rather than viewing development from a more holistic perspective. Finally, the concepts of core, peripheral and semi-peripheral nations are abstract. Even core nations are reliant upon other nations for products, especially in the era of globalization. This can be evidenced by examining where core nations obtain their non-renewable fuels from with large suppliers of oil and gas such as Russia and Middle Eastern states being perceived as semi-peripheral nations rather than core nations. This control over fossil fuels gives semi-peripheral nations power over core nations, as evidenced by the OPEC oil crisis of the 1970s and current rises in the price of wholesale gas as a result of the Ukrainian conflict. That concludes this Chief of the EU Sociology topic video looking at theories of development, focusing on world systems theory. Thanks for watching.